Hi, my name is Caprice Rengifo, and I'm going to talk about volatile anesthetics versus total intravenous anesthesia for cardiac surgery. Definition Volatile agents have been used for more than 150 years to provide a general anesthesia. Expansion of the role as sedative with potentially other therapeutic properties for critical care patients has been increasing interest over the last 30 years. Current sedation practice predominantly relies on benzodiazepines, propofol, and ketamine, which are commonly combined with opioids to provide analgesia and consolidation. Total intravenous anesthesia. Total intravenous anesthesia, or TIVA, is a technique of general anesthesia which uses a combination of agents given exclusively by the intravenous growth without the use of inhalation agents, gas anesthesia. And in this video, we are going to see about intravenous anesthetic agents. This is a concise presentation for medical students. Intravenous anesthetic agents are used in general anesthesia. The various drugs in this class include propofol, etomidate, ketamine, benzodiazepines, barbiturates, and opioids. We will be dealing mainly about propofol, etomidate, and ketamine in this video. Now let us see about the mechanism of action of these drugs. The exact mechanism of action of propofol is unknown. It is thought to prolong activity at GABA A receptor and thereby potentiating effect of GABA at postsynaptic neuron. Etomidate also prolongs activity at GABA A receptor and potentiates the effect of GABA at postsynaptic neuron. Ketamine is a NMDA receptor antagonist. This decreases neuronal conduction. Now let us see about the clinical uses of intravenous anesthetic agents. Propofol is useful in induction and maintenance of anesthesia. It is also useful for conscious sedation. Etomidate is useful for induction of anesthesia and conscious sedation. Ketamine is used less often due to its side effect profile. It can be used for minor surgical procedures. It can be used as local anesthetic for neuropathic pain. It may also be useful in acutely suicidal patients. Now let us see about the side effects of intravenous anesthetic agents. Propofol can cause hypotension and chemical pancreatitis. Etomidate can cause vomiting, myoclonus and adrenal suppression. Ketamine can cause hallucinations, cardiac depression and respiratory depression. If you have any suggestions. Applications in medicine. Anesthesia during coronary artery bypass grafting is typically in use with intravenous drugs only or with a combination of volatile and intravenous agents. When volatile anesthetics are administered before, during, or after periods of organ ischemia, they exert cell protective effects through multiple mechanisms. Mechanisms The first one is modulation of the protein couple receptors. Another one is intracellular signaling pathways, gene expression, potassium channels, and the last one, mitochondrial phone. The connection which you have with the patient and start speaking to them and try to relieve the pressure. Once the patient is in the anesthetic room, starting the poll, anesthesia of great protein uh, association guidelines, and monitoring. So starting ECG, five lead ECG, including lead two, lead five, which have a great susceptibility of picking up ischemic changes, pulse oximeter, uh, temperature probing once the patient is asleep, and we usually use an isopharyngeal probing, arterial uh, monitoring, and usually we use invasive arterial monitoring. And it depends on your center. So if your center is uh, using uh, the rigid artery for revascularization, you should have a discussion with the surgeon on the day of the surgery whether they are going to harvest the rigid artery or not, because this will affect your option, which side that you are going to cannulate, the radial side. Most appropriately, we use a single line rigid artery, but in some occasion, we can use more than one arterial line. This is uh, if the patients have a higher risk uh, of coming off intraortic alone or something like that, just as a conduit. Once the patient is asleep, a central venous pressure monitoring should be a routine for all of these patients. And it helps us very much uh, during the weaning from cardiopulmonary bypass. And it will give us an idea about the accommodation of the heart. How what is CABG? 
Coronary artery bypass grafting is a type of surgery that improves blood flow to the heart. CABG or angioplasty with stem placement may be options if you have severe blockages in your large coronary arteries, especially if your heart's pumping action has already been weakened. Coronary artery disease is just one system manifestation of a systemic disease, atherosclerosis, arteriosclerosis. It's the accumulation of cholesterol plaque between the very inner and the middle layer of the artery, which gradually occludes the artery. It's just like there's a landslide across the river. You can tunnel out the landslide and reestablish the native riverbed, or you can go around the landslide and create a new riverbed. And that's what we do in coronary bypass surgery. If you connect your conduit, vein or artery, to the native artery beyond the obstruction, then if it's the chest wall artery, it's already got flow because it's connected. In the vein, then you have to bring the vein up to the aorta and make an incision or a small hole in the aorta and connect the vein to the aorta. Over 200,000 people a year approximately have this kind of operation and our success rates are extremely high. The mortality rates from that are very, very low, less than 2% in most. Our hospital stays a lot less than they were 39 years ago when I first did this. 10 days to two weeks, now it's somewhere between two. Pros and cons. The first one is reduced incidence of postoperative nausea and vomiting, reduced atmospheric pollution, more predictable and rapid recovery, greater hemodynamic stability, preservation of hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction, a reduction in intracerebral pressure, reduced risk of organ toxicity, and the last one, redu reduction in mortality after CABG with volatile anesthetics. Cons. Severe toxic effects on organs by their metabolism, increased incidence of malignant hyperthermia, adverse cerebral outcome, allergic reaction to anesthetic agents, and the last one, the propofol infusion syndrome. Hi, I'm Dr. Raghunath. I've done my MD in anesthesiology. Right now I'm practicing as a senior consultant in the Department of Anesthesiology, Ferment Hospital. Now, general anesthesia can be administered either through mask or through laryngeal mask airway or through endotracheal tube. Now, laryngeal mask airway has got a lot of advantages when you compare it with, with an endotracheal tube. This, laryng this is laryngeal mask airway which was invented way back in 1988. It has been in practice since 1998 by Dr. Archie Brain. Now, this laryngeal mask airway has got a small mask surrounded by a cuff with a tube attached to it. This, this laryngeal mask airway is usually when you put it into the patient is usually present at the uh, on top of the um, windpipe and um, the other hand is is used to deliver oxygen and anesthetic gases when you compare it to endotracheal tube is very easy to use it number one number two when you compare it to the endotracheal tube the hemodynamic hemodynamic changes of the patient is very very minimal while well, using an laryngeal mask airway either during induction or at the time of emergence of the from patient from the anesthesia. The other advantages of this laryngeal mask airway is that the chances of laryngospasm, bronchospasm or sore throat is very very less. And the, the, uh, con the requirement of anesthesia during the procedure is also very very minimal uh, less when you compare it to an endotracheal tube. And the oxygen saturation at the time of emergence is also very good when you compare it to an endotracheal. Issue of playing Ecuador. In Ecuador, the use of volatile anesthetics often does not result in the best way because it produces some accidents such as poisoning. For that reason, there is not much preference for the use of this type of drug. And with respect to total IV anesthetics, they are much better absorbed, last much longer, and do not produce poisoning. Having an operation, 
you may be given general anesthesia to put you to sleep and keep you free from pain. Your doctor may recommend general anesthesia for a procedure that is extensive, takes a long time, or requires you to be in an uncomfortable position. Before your procedure, an IV line will be placed in a vein in your arm using a small tube called a cannula. The IV will deliver fluid and medications directly into your bloodstream. You may receive some medication to help you relax. You will be placed on the operating table and made as comfortable as possible. A blood pressure cuff will be placed on your arm to check your blood pressure readings. Sticky pads will be placed on your chest to check your heart rate. And a clip will be put on your finger to check your body's oxygen levels. These devices allow the anesthesia specialist to closely monitor your vital signs before, during, and after your procedure. You will begin receiving general anesthesia by either breathing anesthetic gases through a mask or through IV injection, which will cause you to fall asleep. Once you are asleep, you will be given a mixture of oxygen and anesthetic gases either through your mask or through a special tube inserted through your mouth and into your windpipe. The tube is attached to a respirator, which helps you breathe while delivering the gases to your lungs. Deep in your lung tissues, the gases are absorbed into your bloodstream and carried by blood cells to your brain. The anesthesia prevents your brain from receiving messages from nerves in your body. As a result, you will remain asleep and pain-free during your procedure, and you will have no memory of it when you wake up. After you... Conclusion. Among patients undergoing elective isolate CABG and interoperative anesthetic regimen that include volatile anesthetics did not result in significantly fewer deaths at 30 days or one year than a regimen of total intravenous anesthesia. Thank you.